Going to do a real quick run through on this one. This is uh, a one owner, originally sold right here at Haylet RV. Barely used little J Feather 7 16 foot hybrid with front and rear beds. Uh, if you want to see if it's available, you can visit the link in the video description. What I'm going to do is just give you kind of a, a quick visual overview of the condition of it. Then, after this, is actually going to follow the original video for this RV. It's so darn new that uh, that information will be very valuable to you, uh, even though this is not a new RV. Basically, the folks bought it, loved camping, but felt they wanted and needed to go larger. That is about it. This is one of the very few J Feather 7 16 foot hybrids that was actually built with galvanized steel wheel wells. Traditionally, those are an ABS plastic. There were literally only like a handful of those created. So, <laughs> it's a collector's item. I, I don't know. I don't think I'd go that far with it. But it is clean. It's basically new, guys. You're getting uh, effectively a new RV at a used price tag. Like, if I referred to something, oh my lord, it is windy, as a late model, low mile car, you would already kind of, whoa, come on camera, adjust here. You'd already understand what that is. Well, this is that in a camper. This is a late model, low mile camper, if that makes sense. You'll notice that the cabinets aren't screwed up, the countertops aren't all jacked up, all the original owner's manuals are present and accounted for. We give people a bag to keep track of all that stuff so they don't lose anything. Um, I mean, she's in great shape. There's just not much more to say about it. Very clean, very simple. You're basically going to get a brand new camper that somebody else paid the depreciation on, and then you get, you know, a camper that you and your family can go out and use and enjoy for a long time. The only little thing I saw where I was like, ah, crap, is, and I mean, I'm being nitpicky and tiny, and chances are you wouldn't have noticed it, is they had like a, uh, like a rack mounted up here to like hang uh, coats or towels or something, and they had pulled that down and brought it with them. So there's two teeny tiny little holes in the bathroom door. Other than that, brand new trailer at a used price tag. That ain't all bad. So take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping everyone, and stay tuned for the full video following this right now. Jay Feather 16 XRB here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is Jayco Camper. I firmly believe the model number should be uh, 16 OMG because oh my gosh this is a good looking trailer uh, you are looking at uh, at the time of this filming uh, a full inside outside facelift on this product with only some minor structural things basically they're just finally starting to make a trailer that looks as good as it performs down at Jayco and this thing is just a stone cold knockout inside and out there's a lot of little campers like this I'm going to talk about the things that make this different from the rest I'm going to try to point out where this could be different from the rest that we have in stock even um, you know, the, every camper does something better than something else. This is going to do a lot of things better than a lot of other things. That's what I'm going to get at. For instance, we're looking at a nice power awning here. Compact campers being a very price aggressive market. There's not a lot of markup in these. Uh, you know, you're talking hundreds, not thousands of dollars here. Um, the uh, thing here is that you usually get a, a cheaper manual awning. Jayco said, forget it. We're going to be better than everybody else. We're going power. And this thing is so slick and smooth. 30 seconds in or out. You get a shady spot here for your picnic table, and uh, that's all you need. Now notice, too, uh, the uh, 16 series, we're seeing an update to an outside entertainment center. You can take a uh, aftermarket TV. I don't believe a TV is included with this camper. That's an aftermarket item. What they're finding is the small TVs that they would put in a camper like this are cheaper at Walmart or Target than they are to get from a factory supplier. So save a few bucks, get one aftermarket, and it comes with the big bracket, and it can go inside or outside the camper. Pretty slick stuff. Aluminum wheels, not necessarily common in a smaller class like this. What's very, very, very uncommon is a full galvanized steel protective wheel well here. God forbid you ever do suffer a blowout. A, uh, a, the, you know, the, the belt on a tire can just blow out the interior of a camper. We have two or three of those a year that we replace some flooring in, and it's just a terrible project, and it's costly, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's certainly going to put a damper on your holiday weekend. Now, there's a good chance you don't got to worry about it. Little campers like this don't usually have a little uh, outside propane connection or a place to put a grill. Um, again, drill's usually an option on little campers like these. I believe that's still the case here. Double check me though. I do publish a copy of our MSRP sheet in case I get them wrong. You know, they change stuff all the time. Under the sofa, we have a big outside storage compartment that most small campers simply do not have. And uh, what's nice here is they give you a big door to get it in. So you can actually shove big stuff in here. And it's the detail stuff, guys, that's always going to separate a Jayco. The simple fact that like, it, it comes with a wheel here for your front tongue jack. That's uh, going to allow you to wiggle the trailer on your campsite and move it around where you want to. 
and I'm just still blown away just the, the high definition color contrast they got going on the outside here is so good looking and they even tied the bed end material in together with that little stuff like diamond plate down here that's the stuff a lot of these little campers don't have to save a couple bucks because it will save a couple bucks but you're going to end up with a dented up front end on your camper especially especially if you're towing on any sort of dirt anytime um the uh, entire frame under this camper is a little bit different it's a different style of frame long story short it's very light it's very strong cost a dollar more but that's the kind of stuff you can't see uh you know from a brochure that's just the kind of stuff that you see on resale value that's why we like your jaco's they have killer resale value compared to so many brands and check out this big window on this little camper it's, it's almost absurdly large really uh you know like my ego <laughs> But um, this camper is going to get you lots of light inside because of that, and you're, you're never going to have a big problem like with it feeling too dark on a rainy day in here. Um, the uh, front rear beds, uh, both rated for like 1,050 pounds or some silly number like that. You're never, ever going to overload the beds. But that's the whole point of this trailer. It is overbuilt with the intention of long-term use and ownership. There's a lot of intelligent design that goes into this. Like these bed ends are reverse cambered. What that means, well, they're not reverse camber, they're just straight camber. What that means is if you looked at it, unloaded, the middle actually bows up a little bit so that when you put weight on it, it levels out flat. They used to build them flat, and then when you laid on it, it would buckle down in the middle. The problem is when you fold this up against the side of the trailer, you now have a gap here. The way this trailer is designed is that the middle is going to touch first to seal, then you're going to cinch the sides down and get a flush mount. I don't know if that little hand gesture marathon right there is useful for you. Uh, you know, come visit us in person, maybe we can explain it a little better. Um, just little stuff like the, the little locks that they use up here, this black handle, they keep the hybrid beds in place. It's a, it's a nicer grade component. It helps, even if you forget to actually key lock it, it fights itself from opening going down the road. Lamination is a big difference here on a Jayco. And that's the problem is you can't see the difference between pinch rolling that a lot of other brands use and vacuum lamination that is being used here. Long story short, vacuum lamination is a better, stronger, longer lasting process with a significantly reduced chance for um, uh, delamination and failure. This does have a full walk-on roof, which most little campers like this simply do not have. Now, here's another thing I forgot to talk about in the first place. Let me uh, flip the light on here. Boom, LED light strip at the base of the awning. That's stuff that little campers like this don't have. This is the premiere of its class, guys. And just to kind of drive that point home further, it's built better, it lasts longer, and has twice the warranty of anything else I know of built in this category. There are a lot of good campers, and they're all the best at different things, but overall, this is the winner. This is, uh, you know, best selling, longest lasting, best guaranteed, best appointed trailer in its category. Even little stuff like they're putting a little door strut on here so that if you do have a TV mounted there, the door's not gonna slam open and crush a flat screen TV and dent your door. That's a double whammy that nobody wants to get involved with. Little stuff like this, double entry step. Little campers like this have single steps. This is a huge difference on this trailer compared to virtually anything else I've seen in a smaller class. And again, you want to run that awning in just push a button watch it roll up right up for you and let's see here we're going to start counting it's been about two seconds about probably about 15 seconds in or out you're going to have your awning open or closed and that's all there is to it it's just simpler easier if you wake up at night and the wind's banging that awning around you don't even got to get dressed you just got to walk over and push a button then go lay down and go back to sleep there you go it was about 15 seconds and she's closed up a little noisy out there I'm gonna close this thing up so as the model number would indicate it's about 16 foot box probably 19 20 foot tip to tail including tongue and bumper 2912 pounds as this particular camper is built um, so basically extremely extremely towable SUV minivan towable that's a cool thing because a lot of folks with minivans they normally don't have anything to tow with or uh, to tow around now they do now watch this boom full one switch light bank going on here that's something you don't normally see until you're in a much higher dollar much larger travel trailer and you're getting smart awesome features like that here in a small camper just because it's small doesn't mean it has to be cheap that's the thing that's the thing that everybody forgets um i don't remember the name of this color scheme and uh, i apologize for that um the color schemes uh, that you see in our photo tour may differ from this video. Small equipment items may vary from this video. This is here is stock footage 
and uh, to kind of teach you the differences between a J Feather 7 and so many other things. Previously called the J Feather SLX last year, by the way. So we've got a freestanding table here. This table can go inside, outside. You can use it like a picnic table. It can fold down, obviously, into a sleeper. It can be used, obviously, like a normal dinette. Sofa can, uh, you can just sort of pull those back cushions off, and that can be a single person sleeper. And this little pocket here is kind of an indicator. You have a little hidden headboard going on. So uh, if the kids have little stuff they like to tuck away or you need a spot for alarm clocks, because there is a power outlet right there, you got the perfect spot for it. Um, we have uh, Denver mattress bunks uh, with the, uh, the teddy bear plush cover here. And this is super soft, very fuzzy, very comfy and warm. And that's the nice thing is it is warmer in the colder weather. And if it's really hot, you can always uh, unzip those side panels for cross breeze or kick on your air conditioner. Full roof AC, as far as I know, is an option. We generally put this on our J-Feather hybrids just to really give you that maximum cooling capacity. This is the same size air conditioner used on a lot of fifth wheels, guys. On a little 16-foot camper, you could just about breathe the icicles in here if you really felt like it. Um, everything's a touch nicer. Your window shades uh, are pleated night shades, not uh, you know metal shades that can get bent up. Metal shades right here next to a sofa. About the first time someone makes you laugh and you tilt your head back, you're going to just twist them up, bust them up. Now you don't have to worry about it. And again, these windows open for ventilation. Um, spinning you around here. Again, just give you another big pass of that giant window over there. Lets in so much light that it fights the camera. Now notice above the refrigerator, this is your little entertainment center up here. Your TV connections are up here. Um, little uh, AM, FM, CD, stereo system going on. Little storage pocket for various little items. And this is a, a five cubic foot fridge. They go with this size because if they went bigger, you'd lose a spot for the TV. It does still have a freezer drawer right here, by the way. So you do still have place for the popsicles to keep the kids cooled off on those hotter days. Um, I think I mentioned all LED interior lights. If not, I just did, so there you go. Uh, very, you know, uh, compact but effective kitchenette. Uh, if you're doing a lot of camping in a hybrid, you're probably doing a lot of camping outdoors anyway. This is a good place. This is the best way you can describe a hybrid. It's like it's a it's a way more comfortable pop up. It's just a pop up that doesn't have all the hassle. But you got some sweet storage going on under the sink here, and they opened that up a little bit from last year. That's cool to see. Um, around the corner here, and this is one of the reasons I put these videos together. This little pocket here, I had a hard time trying to get a, a good photo on it, so I thought, man, I'm going to make sure I just point that out in a video. Uh, again, more storage space up here. Can never get enough storage space in any camper. Pardon my halo coat laying around here. It got a little warm as I started setting this thing up and thought I'll just toss it aside for now. But what I like about this rear bed here is the privacy. There's a lot of private space going on. Um, you know, you've got your little privacy curtain here. Um, each uh, bunk is set up for a bunk fan light here. I don't believe those are included with this camper. I'm going to have to do some looking around for you. Generally, you will find those omitted on a more price aggressive camper like this one. However, what you'll also generally find omitted on a price effective camper like this one is having both a skylight and a power vent fan. Usually the power vent fan is shoved on top of the shower and it doesn't get you as much light in here. It's drastically different actually. As well as the shower wall panel surround right here. If they didn't have the shower wall paneling, the water that comes off your body would just hit normal wall panels. And over time, not even a lot of time, the, the steam and the heat and the moisture will cause that wallpaper to peel and curl. So if you ever go to resale or trade this camper, if it didn't have this, it would look like there was a leak and water damage in your bathroom. Even though there wasn't, you would lose a lot of money because of it. Now you don't have to worry about it. Because it's a Jayco and it's built better. It's last longer. That's the whole point of this endeavor right here, guys. You know, there's a lot of different campers out there. And in this in this category, there's not a there's not a big price variance. What's interesting is we found with our volume sales, we tend to be cheaper on Jayco's than other brands are on cheaper built campers. So give us a chance, give us a call. I think you're going to see why we carry what we carry and the differences that are between the different products out there. 800-256-5196. Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Stay safe. Happy camping.